welcome back. So today we're going to be doing some basic AI detection. So this will be anytime we come near the AI, I want to be able to tell the AI that the player is near and for them to lock onto them. And then once the player leaves the general vicinity, we need to also turn that off again. So there's a couple of things that we need to set up before we actually get started. So I'm going to step over to the enemy AI here and I'm just going to reset the target body so that the target body will be null. And right now we have the Godot script version of enemy navigation control, but we're going to need to do this with C sharp and Godot. We need to go in here and right here underneath the process function, we need to check to see if the target body does not equal null. The reason for this being is we need to make this null whenever the player is not near or whenever whatever target that AI is focusing on is not near. And we need to check that in the process function or else it'll start throwing errors. So we'll go ahead and save that. And let's hop over to the C-sharp version as well. And we're just going to do the exact same thing right there. All right. So now we can get started. What we're going to do is we're going to create something called an area 3D on the character body 3D. So we just type in area 3D here. We will also need to add a collider. So in our case, we're probably just going to make that be a sphere collider. And I'm going to set the radius to something like 8. That'll be small enough to not be attracting them from everywhere in this map, but large enough that we can actually check it. And then we're going to need one more thing. Under the static body 3D, we're going to create a new node. And we're just going to call this one detection. All right, so we're going to need to create a couple scripts, both C-sharp and Godot script. We're going to create one for the detection node and one for the area 3D, which is, uh, let's just call it player detection radius. Yeah, radius. The reason why we are doing it in this method, instead of, say, having the AI have a collider attached to them, is that it is much higher performance to have a single collider attached to the player, a single area 3D, and then walk around and activate any AI that are nearby. Even if you later add line of sight checks for the AI, it is good for performance to have this to turn off that line of sight check so the AI doesn't even try if they're not within range. All right, so let's go ahead and create the code and then we'll get started. So we're going to create two scripts. One will be called detection control and one will be called player detection control. All right, now that we've made that, we'll go ahead and hop into code and get started. We're probably going to get started first with the player detection control as it is slightly more complicated. And then we'll swap over to the detection control. And here we are in the detection control. We're going to be first creating a couple of exports. We're also going to be modifying the Godot script to be inheriting from area 3d forgot to do that when i created it the only export that we actually need here is the player container and this is what we're going to pass over to the ai when we walk in the area that way the ai knows what to follow next we're going to need to create two functions and both of these are going to be called through signals in the area 3d now the signal in area 3d does pass a node 3d which is the body that it collided with so we're just going to call that body and we're going to pass that as a parameter in our new function on area enter next on the c sharp side we're going to be checking to see if get node or null and we're just going to be passing the detection control script type and we're going to be checking for the detection node underneath that static body, the exact same way we did when we uh, created the actual gun script. Now, within that, we're also going to be on the Godot script side, we're going to be doing things just a little bit differently. And this is once again exactly like in the blaster controller. Now, we are creating references to scripts that don't have those references yet. So this is going to be throwing errors for the moment, but in our next session, we're going to be creating these scripts that these are calling. So we're just going to go ahead and name them these, and then we'll know that we'll be going into the next script with that in mind. Now, also on the Godot script, when I create the on area exit, I do make a slight error. I make the indention for the variable AI detection one indention to the right, which Godot script is very indention conscious. So be aware of that. I do come back and fix it just a little bit later, but I did want to make sure that everyone knew that. And then we just do the exact same thing with an on player exit. So we're going to hop on over to detection control here, but but there's something that we have to do to get the Godot script of enemy navigation control that's slightly different than C sharp. So we're going to hop in here and we're going to use the class name enemy navigation. 
All this is going to do is make the enemy navigation control accessible by the detection control script. But we're going to need to do the same thing for detection control in order to make it accessible by the player detection control script. So if we save that, now we should be able to actually determine that detection control exists, but it still won't have the player enter and exit. So we're going to do that in both the C Sharp and the Godot script variants. So let's go ahead and dive into that. All right, so here we are. We're going to need an export for the public enemy navigation control. And this is going to be the code that we had built in the last episode. And it's we're going to be changing the target of it using this code. And of course, remember in the Godot script, we do need the class name detection control in order to be able to see this script in other scripts. Now we're going to create two functions. One's going to be on player enter and one's going to be on player exit, much like with the previous script. This is what's going to be called via that script. And first we're going to put in the parameter for the on player enter as node 3D player controller. And that's what we're going to pass via the other script. And we're just going to set that target body. And then the on player exit, we're obviously not going to have, need any parameter for that. All we're going to do is set the target body to null. There may be more elegant ways to handle this, but for the time being, this should work just fine for our uses. All right, so now that we have both of those, we should be able to build, and it should work just fine. All right, so we can go ahead and hop in, and let's go ahead and create, attach these scripts to these nodes. So let's start with the Godot script version first. So we're just going to use the detection control, and we're going to have to tie in the navigation node. Then over on the area 3D that we created, we're just going to attach the detection for the player. And area 3D is a little bit different. We got to set up the signals. So we have a lot of signals to work here with areas. We're going to just be focusing on the body entered and body exited, but there is a lot of other options here. And I'm not going to go over all of them because they can be very complex. However, the documentation for area 3D will be in the comment in the description. Sorry. All right, so let's go ahead and connect body entered. And it may not be available. What we're going to have to do is just use the names directly and those should work just fine. So let's go ahead and make sure that the player container is attached to the area detection, the area 3D, so that that way we can actually tell the AI who to follow. So let's go ahead and save that and hit play and see what happens. So as you walk closer, the AI follows you. And then when you walk away a little bit, you'll notice he does not follow you anymore. And that's pretty much it. That's the basics. So we can also hook up the C sharp side of things and check those as well. And it's also important to note that the C Sharp version will not work with the Godot script version of enemy navigation control. So we'll have to swap that one out as well. And as you can see, it works just fine. And we can still shoot it. Okay. So following this, next up, what we'll probably be doing is making a little bit more complex logic. Now that we know when the target is available or not, we can use that to determine whether, say, the AI wanders or the AI is following the player. Then following that, what we're probably going to be doing is working back into making the AI actually shoot at the player. And that'll be a whole other step forward in that direction. But for now, that's everything. Thank you all for your continued support. And as always, have a wonderful day.